Hello students, welcome to EPG Part Shala. I'm Dr. Mandi from GNDU Amritsar. Today we are going to talk on the module Deficit Financing from the paper Business Environment. After completing this module, you will be able to understand the concept of deficit financing. You will also learn the economic effects of deficit financing and you will understand the current trends and issues of deficit financing in India. Deficit financing is a budgetary situation with expenditure is higher than the revenue. It is a practice adopted for financing the excess expenditure with outside resources. The expenditure and revenue gap is financed by either printing of currency or through borrowing. Thus, it is a method of meeting government deficits through the creation of new money. The deficit is a gap caused by the excess of government expenditure over its receipts. The expenditure includes disbursement on revenue as well as on capital account. Now there are various indicators of deficit in the budget. If we talk of budget deficit, it is total expenditure minus total receipts. Revenue deficit is the difference between revenue expenditure and revenue receipt. Fiscal deficit is total expenditure minus total receipts except borrowings. Then comes primary deficit which is the difference between fiscal deficit and interest payments. Effective revenue deficit is equal to revenue deficit minus grants for the creation of the capital asset. Another term is monetized fiscal deficit which is that part of fiscal deficit which is covered by the borrowing from RBI. Definitions According to Tyler Lecoma, deficit financing is similar to debt financing but refers to specific practices used by governments in order to increase the number of debt instruments they have currently in the market. As per Indian Planning Commission, the term deficit financing is used to denote the direct addition to gross national expenditure through budget deficits, whether the deficits are on current revenue or of capital accounts. According to Webster Dictionary, deficit financing is an instrument. In government, the practice of spending more money than is received as revenue, the difference being made up by borrowing or minting new funds. The term usually refers to a conscious attempt to stimulate the economy by lowering tax rates or increasing government expenditure. According to Investopedia, a fiscal deficit is regarded by some as a positive economic event. For example, economist John Maynard Keynes believed that deficit helps countries climb out of economic recession. On the other hand, fiscal conservatives feel that government should avoid deficits in favor of a balanced budget policy. According to K. Akhila Reddy, Fiscal deficit is a difference between the government's total expenditure and its total receipts, excluding borrowing of course. If the government spends more than it earns, the situation is called a fiscal deficit. Thus, fiscal deficit is equal to government spending minus government revenue. Professor Dillard also defines it as the program of public investment should be financed by the borrowing rather than by taxation. This kind of borrowing is known as deficit financing. Let's discuss now the methods of deficit financing. Borrowing from the central bank, raising funds from the RBI in the form of new currency is one of the important instruments for the government in this regard. Second issue of new currency, the government may either borrow from the central bank in the form of new currency or issue new currency itself to increase the money circulation in the economy. Third is withdrawal of its accumulated cash balances from RBI. Objectives of deficit financing. First one is to finance war. 
Deficit financing has generally been used as a method of financing war expenditure. During the time of war, it becomes difficult to mobilize adequate resources. Hence, deficit financing is used as a means for raising funds. Secondly, remedy for depression. In developed countries, deficit financing is used as an instrument of economic policy for removing the conditions of depression. Professor Keynes has also advocated for deficit financing as a remedy for depression as well as unemployment. Third objective is economic development. The main objective of deficit financing is an under, in an underdeveloped country like India is to promote economic development. The use of deficit financing in fact becomes essential for financing the development plans for the payment of interest. Loan which are taken by the government are supposed to be repaid along with their interest. For that, government needs money. Deficit financing is an important tool to get the income for the repayment of loan along with the interest. Another objective is to overcome low tax receipts, to overcome the losses of public sector enterprises and for implementing anti-poverty programs. Economic effects of this deficit financing. Deficit financing has various economic effects which are interrelated in many ways like deficit financing and inflation, deficit financing and capital formation and economic development, deficit financing and income distribution. Now let's talk about deficit financing and inflation, how they are related. It is said that Deficit financing is inherently inflationary. Since deficit financing raises the aggregate expenditure and hence increases the aggregate demand, the danger of inflation is always large. This is particularly true when the deficit financing is made for the prosecution of war. This method of financing during war time is totally unproductive since it neither adds to the society's stock of wealth nor it enables the society to enlarge its production capacity. So the end result is hyperinflation. On the contrary, the resource mobilized through deficit financing get diverted from civil to military production, thereby leading to the shortage of consumer goods. Anyway, additional money thus created fuels the inflationary fire. However, whether deficit financing is inflationary or not depends upon the nature of deficit financing. Being unproductive in character, war expenditure made through the deficit financing is definitely inflationary. But if the developmental expenditure is made, deficit financing may not be inflationary, although it results in increase in money supply. To quote an expert view, deficit financing undertaken for the purpose of building up useful capital during the short period of time is likely to improve productivity and ultimately it increases the elasticity of supply curves. And the increase in productivity can act as an antidote against the price inflation. In other words, inflation arising out of inflation is temporary in nature. Now deficit financing and capital formation and economic development. The technique of deficit financing may be used to promote economic de development of the country in various ways. Nobody denies the role of deficit financing in garnering resources required for the economic development, though the method is an inflationary one. Economic development largely depend upon the capital formation. The basic source of capital formation is savings, but less developed countries are characterized by the low saving income ratio. In these low saving countries, deficit finance led inflation becomes an important source of capital accumulation. So during inflation, producers are largely benefited as compared to the 
poor fixed income R nuts. Saving propensities of the former are considerably higher. As a result, aggregate savings of the community becomes larger, which can be used for the capital formation to accelerate the level of economic development of the country. Further, deficit-led inflation tends to reduce the consumption propensity of the public. Thus, it is called forced savings, which can be utilized for the production of capital goods in future. Consequently, a rapid economic development will take place in these countries. Deficit financing and income distribution. It is said that deficit financing tends to widen income inequality. This is because of the fact that it creates excess purchasing power. But due to inelasticity in the supply of essential goods, excess purchasing power of the general public act as an incentive to price rise. During inflation, it is said that rich becomes richer and poor becomes poorer. Thus, social injustice becomes prominent. However, all types of deficit expenditure not necessarily tend to disturb existing social justice. If money collected through deficit financing is spent on public goods or in public welfare programs, some sort of favorable distribution of income and wealth may be made. Ultimately, excess dose of deficit financing leading to inflationary rise in prices will accelerate income inequality. Anyway, much depends upon the volume of deficit financing. Advantages of deficit financing, especially in India. First of all, as deficit financing does not impinge any trouble either to the taxpayers or to the lenders who lend their surplus money to the government, this technique is most popular to meet developmental expenditure. Deficit financing does not take away any money from anyone's pocket and yet provides massive resources. Moreover, in India, Deficit financing is associated with the creation of additional money by borrowing from Reserve Bank of India. Interest payments to the RBI against this borrowing come back to the government of India in the form of profit. Thus, this borrowing or printing of new currency is virtually a cost-free method. On the other hand, borrowing involves payment of interest cost to the lenders. Thirdly, financial resources which are required for financing economic plans which a government can mobilize through deficit financing are certain and known beforehand. The financial strength of the government is determinable if deficit financing is made. As a result, the government finds this measure handy. Deficit financing has certain multiplier effects on the economy too. This method encourages the government to utilize unemployed and underemployed resources. So it results in more income and employment in the economy. Further, deficit financing is an inflationary method of financing. However, the rise in prices must be a short-term phenomena. Above all, a mild dose of inflation is necessary for economic development. Thus, if inflation is kept within the reasonable level, deficit financing will promote economic development, thereby neutralizing the disadvantages of rise of price. Moreover, during inflation, private investors go on investing more and more with the hope of earning additional profits. Seeing more profits, the producers would be encouraged to reinvest their savings and accumulated profits. Such investment leads to an increase in income, thereby setting the process of economic development rolling. Now let's discuss the other part that is adverse effects of deficit financing. Deficit financing has several adverse effects on economy. 
the important evil effects are like it leads to inflation deficit financing may lead to inflation due to deficit financing money supply increases and also the purchasing power of people which increase the aggregate demand and thus leads to rise in the prices it has adverse effect on saving too like deficit financing leads to inflation and inflation generally affects the habit of voluntary savings adversely in fact it becomes impossible for the people to maintain the previous rate of savings in the state of rising prices adverse effect on investment it is said that deficit financing affects the investment very adversely when there is inflation in the economy the trade unions tend to demand an increase in wages for which otherwise they engage in lockout strikes etc this in turn decreases the efficiency of labor and creates uncertainty in the business which decreases the extent of investment in the country next comes as inequality in case of deficit financing income distribution becomes unequal during deficit financing deflationary pressure can be seen on the economy which make the rich richer and poor poorer the fixed wage earners are badly affected and it leads to deterioration in their standard of living next comes the problem of balance of payment since deficit financing leads to inflation a high price level as compared to the other countries makes export more expensive on the other hand rise in domestic income and price may encourage people to import more commodities from abroad this creates a deficit in the balance of payment and the balance of payment becomes generally unfavorable next comes change in the pattern of investment deficit financing leads to inflation during inflation the rise in prices and reaching to a very high level in that case people instead of indulging into productive activities start practicing the speculative activities now what's the relation in deficit financing and inflation deficit financing through creation of new money increases the aggregate demand in the economy while the supply of goods and services do not increase in the same proportion this creates an inflationary gap causing the rise in prices generally some arguments are given in support of this contention first of all in developing economies a part of the newly created money through deficit financing may be absorbed by the non monetized sector which is a barter system which tends to get monetized during the development process it reduces the inflationary impact of deficit financing secondly in the developing countries there exists a large amount of unutilized or underutilized resources when the supply increases through deficit financing these resources may be utilized for the productive purposes the production of goods may therefore increase and reduce the inflationary pressure generated in deficit financing the new money generated through deficit financing is often utilized for the productive purposes in the peace time developing economy this may result in production of additional goods and services and this reduces the inflationary pressure of deficit financing this phenomena is much more marked if the money created by the deficit financing is used in the promotion of quick yielding projects in a developing economy the volume of transaction goes up with the process of development a part of the new a part of the new money created by deficit financing may be utilized to meet the needs of increased transactions thus it will also have the impact of reducing the inflationary effect of deficit financing so in spite of the arguments given above 
the price may go up due to deficit financing there are certain arguments which are given to show that even a peace time developing economy may experience inflationary pressures due to deficit financing since deficit financing increases the money supply while the real outputs and services may not increase in the same proportion this is bound to give rise to inflationary pressures in the economy there may be temptations on the part of the government to resort to deficit financing even for non productive purposes some governments used deficit financing to meet their deficit on current account but this type of deficit financing definitely results in raising the prices now following the principle of unbalanced growth many developing countries may set up capital intensive heavy and basic industries to develop their economies these industries have long gestation period their output start coming in the market after many years the increased money supply to set up these industries is therefore not matched by the supply of goods and services in the short run the prices are bound to rise in such a condition moreover there are certain inbuilt rigidities and bottlenecks in the developing economy which prevent the actual output from rising to its potential the increased money supply is not matched by the real output so it creates inflationary pressures in the economy further the majority of people in developing economies are poor when their income increase on account of expanding money supply in the economy it gives rise to higher consumption so these poor people have a very high propensity to consume and hardly they save anything for them or invest anything for them this obviously goes to raise the price level in the economy the governments in developing countries do not have the necessary expertise and administrative experience to keep the inflationary forces in check through the measurements of monetary and fiscal policy they are therefore not able to control the inflationary impact of deficit financing how to reduce the inflationary pressure of deficit financing we all know that deficit financing is a very useful weapon for ensuring the high level of employment in the advanced countries there are certain important measures which can be adopted to control first is formulation of import and export policies a company should frame its import and export policy in such a manner that the supply of an essential goods may not fall secondly proper allocation of resources the rise in price due to deficit financing can be controlled by proper allocation of resources developing countries should prepare effective plans and resources of the country may not be wasted in unproductive projects next is fiscal policy the inflationary pressure can be controlled if the government increases the rate of taxes on luxuries and introduces a compulsory saving scheme monetary policy an effective monetary policy can be adopted to reduce the inflationary pressure most of the developing countries are also using these weapons against the inflationary pressure to reduce the inflation now the question is what should be the extent of deficit financing if it is so important whenever more resources are required to meet the increased public expenditure the government of the underdeveloped countries are always tempted to use deficit financing because it is subject to less public uproar than additional taxation deficit financing is undoubtedly inevitable it has to however be kept within the safe limit so that inflationary forces do not appear in the economy but nobody knows the safe limit in view of all these it is said that deficit financing is an evil but a necessary evil much of the success of deficit financing will be available to the economy if anti inflationary policies are employed in just a right manner
a mild degree of inflation say up to the price rise of 3% per annum is considered tolerable and even essential in the developing economy thus deficit financing which leads to moderate increase in price can be thought as justifiable another important criteria is the creation of money supply deficit financing which leads to the greater increase in money supply has a greater inflationary potential so it must be restrained similarly when the rate of growth of national income is high a higher amount of deficit financing can be absorbed by the economy without any rise in price the extent of deficit financing will also depend on the effectiveness of fiscal and monetary policies adopted in the country to curb the inflationary forces so the efficiency of the administrative machinery to deal with this abnormal situation is required other conditions that determine the safe limits of deficit financing one is excess capacity if there is utilized or underutilized in the industrial and agricultural sector of the country deficit financing will not be inflationary secondly stability of wages when the government succeeds in stabilizing the money wages in economy deficit financing will not be inflationary third is direct control when the government administration is efficient and honest in implementation of measures of direct control to counteract inflationary forces the scope of deficit financing would be greater and non inflationary thus it may be concluded that a reasonable limited deficit financing can promote economic development but undue reliance on deficit financing is certainly harmful deficit financing in india the budget 2015-16 sought to achieve the delicate equilibrium between the concerns of stirring growth accommodating the resource transfer that greater fiscal federalism entailed and ensuring fiscal consolidation this was intended to be achieved through higher capital expenditure greater net resource transfers to the states high gross tax revenues and expenditure rationalization the budget also signaled government's intent on fiscal consolidation with respect to all major deficit indicators as shown in table 1 which elevate with the revised medium term framework that opted for shifting fiscal deficit target of 3% of gdp by one year from 1617 to 1718 accordingly the envisaged fiscal deficit to gdp target was 3.9% in 2015 16 3.5% in 1617 and 3% in 1718 Table one shows major fiscal indicators of the center, that is government, from the year two thousand twelve thirteen to fifteen sixteen. It is showing the revenue receipts. It is showing the gross tax revenue, and net tax to center and total expenditure, revenue expenditure, capital expenditure. revenue deficit fiscal deficit and primary deficit through these years trends in deficit and deficit financing now the budget sought to contain that's the current budget that the fiscal deficit as 5.56 lakh crore that is 3.9% of gdp against 5.13 lakh crore that is 4.1% of gdp in 1415 revenue deficit was estimated at rupees 3.94 crores 3.94 lakh crore that is 2.8% of gdp in the current year as against 2.9% of gdp the previous year as shown by the figure 1 that is trends in deficit as a percentage of gdp unlike some other countries the financing of fiscal deficit in india is mostly from the domestic sources domestic sources constitute roughly 98% of the deficit financing and approximately 84% of the domestic financing is from market borrowing in this part as shown in figure 
two that is financing of fiscal deficit so in the end let's summarize what we have learned in this module of deficit financing it is true that deficit financing is inevitable in less developed countries much success of it depends on how anti inflationary measures are employed in the country to combat the inflation most of the disadvantages of deficit financing can be minimized if inflation is kept within the limit that is a safe limit and to keep inflation within the reasonable and tolerable level deficit financing must be kept within the safe limit not only it is difficult to lay down the safe limit but it's also difficult to avoid the technique of financing which is required for the planned development still then deficit financing is unavoidable it is an evil but a necessary evil considering the needs of the economy its use cannot be discouraged but considering the effects of deficit financing on the economy its use must be made very limited so a compromise has to be made so that benefits of the deficit financing are reaped very soon thank you very much